to get the platinum trophy in this game, you have to finish it on the highest difficulty. But how hard is it really? Let's break it down. Hello and welcome to Platinum Review, a series where we talk about some amazing games, break down the roadmap to Platinum Trophy and I share with you my thoughts on whether you should add another Platinum Trophy to your collection. In this week's video we will be talking about the only game in Uncharted series that doesn't feature Nathan Drake. First of all let's talk about the game itself and the one thing I want to get out of the way first is the gameplay is pretty much the same as it was in Uncharted 4 and that makes a lot of sense since it actually started out as a DLC for it before becoming a standalone game. We are following Chloe Fraser from Uncharted 2 and Nadine Rose from Uncharted 4 as they team up to find the task of Ganesh in the lost city in the heart of India and of course in Uncharted fashion they are not the only ones going after it. I was pleasantly surprised by the story as I wasn't too optimistic that this dynamic duo will be enough to carry this game but they definitely are. There is a decent amount of humor which I'm not gonna be showing in this video because I don't want you comparing it to mine and there is a lot of character development as the relationship progresses and evolves throughout the story. The gameplay consists of shooting sections, climbing, puzzles and it wouldn't be an uncharted game without some big scale action sequences. Shooting is pretty much standard for a third person action game, that being said standard doesn't necessarily mean bad, it just means that it will feel familiar. Usually you have the option to pick a stealthy approach in some of the sections but it really depends on what difficulty you are playing it. On normal stealth is pretty easy but you don't really need to use it as you will be able to dispatch your enemies to the afterlife without too much trouble by going in loud and it will even save you some time. On the other hand when you play on crushing, stealth is an extremely useful tool but it's harder to execute because your enemies are hawkeye and will spot you almost immediately if you're not careful. A new mechanic that the game introduced is the use of silenced weapons and they wear my saving grace on my crushing playthrough. The thing is, like in all the previous Uncharted games you can only pick up one gun and one two-handed weapon so it led me to making pretty hard choices. Should I pick up this silenced pistol with only 6 bullets or this loud gun with 40 bullets that will help me get out of the pickle if I messed up my stealth? And you know what? I absolutely loved it. I feel that it makes you more involved and adds to realism because we are playing as Chloe who is despite being a badass is not a SWAT soldier who can carry two pistols and a shotgun in one hand and a sniper rifle and a rocket launcher in the other one. Another hard choice I had to make was regarding sniper rifles. They were amazing in picking off enemies from far away but absolutely useless in firefights so I always had to assess the situation to decide on whether I should pick it up or not. As for the climbing sections, they are as fluid as they were in Uncharted 4. You usually know where you need to go and your route is conveniently painted white and yellow but that is something all games do to help you out so I really didn't mind it. Puzzles are fun and I did like the fact that they weren't too obvious most of the time. I do appreciate when a game doesn't treat me like a child and lets me figure things on my own. Oh and the action sequences are epic but you knew that already, you saw the title of the game. Last thing to note, Lost Legacy is shorter than the previous Uncharted games and you should be able to realistically finish the story in around 12 hours, unless you're like me of course and decided to do your first playthrough on crushing difficulty while also being bad at third person shooters, then it might take you around 20. Overall I would recommend this game to anyone who likes Uncharted series or third person action adventure games in general and with it being currently sold for only 20 bucks and going as low as 8 from time to time it's definitely a great buy. The Platinum Trophy in this game is the easiest one in the whole Uncharted series. You will have to go out of your way for most of the trophies though and I'm fine with that. Actually you can go as far as finishing the whole game and unlocking just one trophy although it's very unlikely. You can technically get a Platinum Trophy in one playthrough with a small cleanup which is what I did but you really shouldn't do that. Let me explain. In order to finish it in one playthrough you will have to completely ruin your experience because that means playing it on crushing while also following a collectible guide and continuing the legacy of previous in Uncharted games they added way too many useless collectibles here as well. Yes there is an item you can and will need to unlock that will help you find them but it will still ruin the experience for you, like it did for me. I mean to be fair not all collectibles are boring, there are still optional conversations that I really like but treasures are a nuisance as always. By the way you can clean up collectibles you missed with a chapter select anyway so it's really better to just enjoy the game on your first playthrough. The second reason is after finishing the game for the first time you will get access to infinite ammo weapons and they will make the crushing difficulty play through a cakewalk. Now to be fair they're not necessary and if you don't mind the challenge you should play without them as it makes you reevaluate your approach and play much more strategically, something that I did enjoy. But keep in mind playing on this difficulty without infinite weapons is not a joke and there were a couple of encounters that took me more than an hour to get through. Yeah, 
really. I told you, I'm not an epic gamer, I try to portray myself on this channel. I would say that even if you want to challenge yourself and play on Crushing first, don't ruin this game for yourself, it deserves better than that, just do a collectible run on your second playthrough, because you will need to replay about a third of the game again anyway for the way of the warrior trophy, which I would go as far as to say is impossible to do on Crushing difficulty. Speaking of the way of the warrior, it is the only missable trophy in the game and you will unlock it for making it all the way to chapter 5 without using any guns and explosives. And what I mean is not just not using them for damaging enemies, I mean not shooting a single bullet or using explosives at all, which if you accidentally do, will void this trophy. I have to say, going for this one is pretty fun as you will find yourself as Chloe charging into a battle against a whole army of guys with automatic weapons, taking bullets like a champ and beating everybody to death fists only. Honestly, if I was one of them, I would probably run away from such a scene in panic. By the way, when capturing footage for this video, I managed to pull this off on normal difficulty without dying once. Ok ok, I'm lying, I might have died 5 times, but only because I was disregarding stealth, charging in and I was playing on normal and not explorer difficulty. Honestly, it's much easier than it sounds. Couple of things to keep in mind though, you will have to start a brand new game and choose not to carry over your statistics and obviously make sure that your stat stub is actually empty upon starting a new game, and you can always make sure you didn't mess it up in the same stat stub. Also I would advise you to back up your save to a thumb drive or cloud from time to time just in case that you accidentally fired your gun so you won't need to start all the way from the beginning of the game. I would say while playing just take off your fingers of R2, L2 buttons and you should be fine. The only other trophy worth mentioning is best driver in the business, which is a throwback to Uncharted 2 by the way. In chapter 4 you will be exploring a pretty big open area and have a vehicle to your disposal. You will need to drive between two locations that are on the opposite side of the map, because of course they are, and back in under 3 minutes. It did take me a few attempts, and when I say a few I mean about half an hour worth of attempts to finally pop this one, but honestly you will just need a bit of practice and you'll get it, it's really not that hard. When going for it the second time for the sake of this video I did it on my second try. You can even make it easier for yourself by using slow motion from the cheats menu, although it will make it far less enjoyable. All the other trophies are just miscellaneous things that you can easily get with chapter select, so I wouldn't stress too much about them. Overall, I would say that most people should be able to get this platinum trophy in around 30 hours or so with just a bit of effort. So should you platinum Uncharted Lost Legacy? Well, if you like Uncharted games, then the answer is definitely yes. This game is fun and the Platinum Trophy is reasonable with a bit of challenge, but it's not as hard as it looks on a first glance. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to me as I make gaming and trophy hunting content at least once a week. Thank you for watching.